欢迎收听《极限白日梦》，我是节目主持人 Irene。在这里，我们透过深入探访全球各地的户外运动玩家，分享他们挑战极限、透过户外运动探索世界的故事，让我们获得旅行的灵感与激发内心的冒险精神，开启一场属于自己的极限白日梦。在上一集呢，我们采访了台湾的登山车协会 TWMBA。那今天这一集，我们想要跟大家分享，在北海道以滑粉雪著称的滑雪场恶势谷，他们在今年的夏天开启了一个免费的登山车公园 Twin Peaks b y Park。Irene 在今年十月的时候，也有飞到北海道骑这个登山车公园，然后也很荣幸的可以采访到这背后筹备的组织 Namba。二世谷登山车协会的创办人之一 Miles， 那在这一集里面呢 ，Miles 他除了跟我们分享这个组织是怎么诞生的，以及他们的目标，当然不只是一个登山车公园，还有他们是怎么找到这个合伙的股东们，并且说服让当地的政府他们也一起参与。当然，这一集也会有很多详细的分享，就是这个登山车公园的路线。希望呢，这一集呢可以带给台湾热爱登山车的大家一些灵感还有想象。然后我们可以明年一起纠团去骑车，那就马上来收听这一集的采访吧。Today I just invite Miles coming to our podcast and then to talk about all the story behind. Hello, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Why you were not so like shy just a couple of minutes、uh, ago? I just thought it would be funny to come across as a bit awkward. Yeah. Okay. Please give a brief introduction <laughs> of yourself in awkward way. <laughs> I'll be I'll be normal. <laughs> Um, yeah, so my name is、um, Miles Zerlin. I'm from United States,、uh, from Texas, as as Irene mentioned. I've been living in Japan for just over six years now. Five years of that has been based out of Niseko, and yeah, one of the co-founders of、uh, the nonprofit Niseko Area Mountain Bike Association. I mean, I moved to Niseko as many do to snowboard initially, and really kind of fell in love with the snow here and the, the small outdoor community. That's that's quite Tight and close knit and friendly, and I kept thinking to myself, this place would be perfect if we had mountain biking because we already have, I think, the best snow in the world.、Um, and then we're about forty minutes drive away from、uh, the closest surf spot. There's tons of hiking to be done here. We've got climbing. The climbing's not the best in the world, but we've got we've got rock that you can climb and boulder on and what have you. So we kind of have a bit of everything, but we just never really had. Mountain biking,、um, and during the pandemic, I used some of the free time <laughs> that that many of us had here, being a tourist town that was closed to tourism. I used some of the free time, and myself and、uh, a team of five other people, we all started talking about mountain biking. And through those conversations, after about six months of talking, we six months up, of talking, yeah, because there's a lot of a lot of because we were talking about mountain biking. In a really general sense, we had no idea what we wanted to do. We just knew we wanted trails,、um, and we knew we wanted to do something big that really benefited our community. But we didn't know how. We didn't know what that was going to look like. We just talked about biking, basically, biking and trails, and、do、where we were from. Do you do the research? Like everyone、a、go back home, like the research. Not, not. We didn't physically travel anywhere because of the pandemic.、Mm, yeah, <laughs> we couldn't <laughs> online、um, searching online. But all of us had, you know. Mountain biked in other places,、um, ah, from so, everywhere around the world. Yeah, so we have people that have、uh, mountain biked all over the UK or all over Europe and Switzerland or Australia, New Zealand,、uh, myself, the United States, of course, and all of us had our own experiences from you know where we've ridden, and we tried to take all of that and put a concept together for what we thought Niseko could become based off of what we'd seen in other places.、Um, And yeah, through those conversations, we started to think about how do we realize the potential that Niseko has, and、uh, eventually, after studying other mountain biking projects here in Hokkaido and in Niseko and in Japan, we were looking at where things were successful, but also where things were less successful, or why other projects failed,、uh, and we. Yeah, as part of our research, took that into account, and that's how we came up with the the nonprofit approach and being something that unites people instead of being a business that's only about the business profit. We're about you know 
putting money into the community through trails, um, not about putting money into, you know, uh, getting pockets the ticket or anything everything. like that. It's, it's right. all about um, trail building, building communities. And that's, that's you know, evident in um, our, in our, I guess, our slogan, which it's building trails in community. And that's, mm -hmm. we've, we've built some trails now and now, and we've, we've got a community, but we've got a lot of work on both of those to keep building trails and to keep welcoming people to the sport. I think people around the world only see Niseko as a powder destination. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to believe that there were already like mountain bike park exist. And you also take that local information or the data and how they run them, uh, their park yep. into account and to come out with the idea of Twin Peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, there's a local trail building company that have done a few projects here. Uh, and then we've got Hirafu Ski Resort. Um, they had been operating uh, a bike park with just two trails, but they were our community's trails. That's all we had was really those two trails. So... Um, We were really happy to have something. It was, it was, and it was good to ride there. Um, and then it's getting dark, but it almost, so I'm pointing outside kind of across my balcony, but if you were to see this, so there's a tiny ski hill, uh, maybe 800 meters away. No, it's um, Asahi Gaoka. It's just a town, uh, a town local. park. Uh -uh. And uh, there was another project that had been built there. They built one mountain bike trail there. Uh. And so we looked at um, the bike park in Hirafu. We looked at other local projects. We looked at projects in Sapporo. We looked at projects in Tokyo and, and well, not Tokyo specifically, but, you know, down in Honshu, the main island. And uh, we tried to look at the good things. You know, where did they succeed? How can we learn from that? But we also... Did you talk to them, like those park, trying um, to reach them? And uh, some of, some of these groups, yes, we did. Uh, uh, but initially, in the research phase, it was more about um, us learning and less of less of that relationship building side, more of just pure research and and from our experiences in riding here, what did we feel as the trail user? Because that's what we were at that point in time. Mm. Um, so by that time, like six of you that. None of you have experience like building the bike park or running a, own a bike park. We were all mountain bikers. We had all used plenty of trails and all of us had varying levels of involvement mm. in stuff in the past, like my hometown trails, uh, shout out Tyler, Texas. Um, <laughs> I had been involved with the mountain, the mountain biking and cycling community there. Mm. And so I had an idea of how my hometown was able to build trails and how they were able to fund it and how they built kind of the community oh, okay. around that. Uh, other people had more, um, like Andy Meadows, another one of our co-founders, he had um, been more involved with, uh, through his employer, Rhythm, um, he had been more involved with the Asahi Gaoka flow trail they had built um, uh, back in, I think, 2018 or 2017 when that was built. Maybe actually earlier than that, 2016. Anyhow, um, so uh, we all had kind of varying levels of experience with stuff. Some of us were just passionate, like I'm kind of falling more in the passionate, less experienced side of mm -hmm. things. Um, but yeah, we, we all had different ideas about how we could um, make this area successful. Uh, and yeah, we, we through all of this research and also through uh, involving our trail building company, Allegra from Switzerland, we involved them very early in the conversation. Uh, they were able to give us a lot of data um, oh wow! Really? Yeah, they've they've built um, a lot of the largest destinations and resorts in Europe from zero in some cases. So, wow! In whole Europe? Yep. So some of the biggest resorts in Europe. Uh, if you go to their website, you'd just see this really impressive list of, of bike parks that they've been and projects they've been involved with. So uh, we were very lucky to have a relationship with them already uh, through them building the flow trail here in Kuchan Town. So they they had some local connection with Kuchan. I mean, Kuchan's sister city is Samaritz in Switzerland. Oh yeah, there is a how do you call that the on the floor? manhole covers? Yeah, yeah manhole in the, covers. In the streets, you can see. yeah. So we had that's so interesting that uh, sister city relationship, <laughs> yeah. and through that sister city relationship, we knew Allegra, and yeah, they were really supportive. Uh, we had no money. Not even a penny, or one yen, I should say. We're <laughs> Not even currencies. one yen. Yeah, we had no money. Um, we didn't even exist as a as an entity yet. We were just 
people meeting at a cafe to talk about bikes. It sounds like a daydreaming group. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's what we did. We just meet and well, what do we want to do about this? What do we want to do about that? What do you think about this? And we started identifying that maybe being a nonprofit would make a lot of sense. Um, and uh, maybe that would bring the most benefit to the community. And that's really what we wanted to do. And yeah, I don't know. Of course, a nonprofit starts to make more sense. And But none of you ever really thinking like, oh, how do I survive with if I get involved in this project? It's all been, all of us have full-time jobs outside yeah. of Namba. Um, so it's really like it's passion It's all been driven. volunteer, yeah. Wow. And I think the pandemic was the perfect time for this to happen because, again, being a tourism town and having no, no tourist. tourists, yeah. we all had a bit more free time. Yeah. Um, and a lot of snow. And yeah, it's a good winter. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so all of us had... Um, full-time jobs and we didn't really know what we were planning on so we didn't know how big we were we could dream at this point we were all just talking about like oh let's build a mountain bike trail or let's build something and allegro was was helping out with kind of consulting basically um and uh so they were they were kind of helping guide us a little bit helping us use our energy a bit more constructively by pointing us in the right direction and giving us data that we could use. And I think even, even in 2021, if you were to tell me, you know, two years ago that we would have 13 kilometers of trails open right now, and it's all funded by sponsors, I would, would not believe you. It's crazy. And so I think we didn't really know how we were going to grow and we've been lucky to, it's kind of like the startup feel maybe where it's just rapid growth. And, um, we're, we're trying to make the best use of our resources and everything like that. But yeah, we had this rapid growth opportunity and, and, um, is there any, like at the point everyone says, okay, we are ready. Does go to the stakeholders and propose to them. It was, it was part of our, um, board selection process, mm. um, is when we were approaching stakeholders as well. So we started, we started kind of, you know, Hey, we have this idea. We want to build some trails. We want to, you know, reinvigorate summer tourism. We want to give a place for kids to ride bikes and all that stuff. And of course we're approaching Kuchan town and Niseko town and, and also land like large landowners and stuff like that, talking about, um, our vision for the area. And, uh, so it's kind of the same process of our board selection. Uh, and we're lucky to have a very, um, strong and supportive board. I think we've got 24 members and it's, it's everyone from, local town hall members to uh, business and real estate moguls to kind of local average Joes like myself. It's um, super strong if you see the summer yeah. light. <laughs> so we, yeah, we've got it. We've got a pretty good uh, crew behind, behind yeah. Namba, but um, that is kind of at the same time that we're, we're approaching the board because these are people that we want to work with effectively. Uh, and we, we want them to understand our story and we want them to, um, uh, to be a part of our story as well. And so we're, we were approaching these people being like, Hey, we want to make mountain biking happen. We want to build some trails. Would you, do you want to be a part of this? Do you want to jump on board and, um, support? Has anyone asked the question that you couldn't answer throughout these, like the proposing? Uh, I mean, our, our initial thought was that we would build in on resort land, like on, on private land. And, uh, I think understandably so some of these businesses that, you know, there's these resorts, it's a big investment of money. Right. Uh, and if it's all coming from one resort, of course you can't sponsor these things off. So it would be one entity paying for all of this. And, uh, so we had to change our approach. So our initial approach was, oh, we'll just build trails in all the resorts. So there's like plan A, plan B, plan C. Uh, I wouldn't really put them in like a hierarchy necessarily, but yeah, we were like, well, we could do this. We could do that. We could do this. And it was almost like a shotgun approach. Mm. We just started going out there and looked at what worked. And the moment we found something that did, we focused all of our resources and time and energy on that. Um, and yeah, on that note, we started approaching uh, the local town and, um, we identified a attractive land just between Hirafu and Hanazono, um, two of the big ski resorts in town that's owned by Kuchan town. So it's publicly owned land nice. and it's managed by, it's owned by the town, but it's managed by Hokkaido forestry. So publicly owned land, 
one large piece of land. And we only have to deal with basically two stakeholders. So we're dealing with the owner and the operator or the manager of that forest. And that makes it much easier than trying to build in a property that might have 15 different landowners on a mountain or something like that. We only have to deal with two. Um, yeah, once we identified that bit of property, we uh, started developing concepts with Allegra um, beyond just that kind of beyond the the overall view for the area it was more about um what can we do with this section of land not what not what do we think about niseko in five or 15 years what do we think about this piece of land what can we do with this and so i started drawing some concepts and making proposals and uh, basically uh not quite holding seminars but um yeah meeting the town to to show them what we're doing and what we're dreaming about and yeah, we were very, very lucky to secure this piece of land and we're renting the, the property. They paid the rent. We're paying the rent, but we're very lucky that um, we have a very, very, very good rate for what we pay. If we were a for-profit, if we were a business, uh, not a nonprofit, I don't think we would be able to rent this at all. And if we could, it'd be really expensive. Uh, but because we're giving back to the community and we're building free trails, we're almost serving as an extension of the parks and recreation department of the town. Mm. And so they've given us um, a very good deal, but we're paying for it. And so that kind of, that contract and the payment kind of makes the contract stronger because it's not just a, a basic like handshake deal. It's solidified in a contract. So yeah, we're really happy to be paying for that land. And <laughs> I don't think we could have, we really couldn't have found a better spot to do this project. So um, speaking of that park, can you give uh, an introduction? Um, so yeah, Twin Peaks Bike Park is is located on Mount Futagoyama. Uh, Futago means twin and Yama means mountain. And that's where we got tw like Twin Mountain, basically Twin Peaks. Mm. So that's where the name comes from. And it's located between Hirafu and Hanazono. So there's a large section of forest that kind of wraps around the mountain a little bit. You can see a shrine. And we're lucky to have access to that shrine too. Yeah, so we're, we're between Hirafu and Hanazono. Uh, the bike park consists of um, eight trails or something like that if, in terms of different sections. Um, but we've got a climbing trail. It's a uh, green rated, it's a very friendly trail. It's called Ezoshika. And it winds up the, um, the west, sorry, the east side of the mountain. So as you're looking uphill, it'd be on your right. And it's a pretty mellow climb. I think it's about three and a half kilometers, 214 or 216, something like that, meters of elevation. And it just kind of winds gently up through the forest. Uh, and there's a couple of sections as you're climbing where you can you can drop into another trail that's called Easy Rider. So Easy Rider is the second trail we built, and that's a, a blue rated downhill flow trail. And um, as I mentioned, it you can go all the way to the top, but there's num numerous sections where as you're climbing, if you're a beginner rider or if you just want to do a warm-up lap or you're tired and you just want to do a cool-down lap, you can yeah. you can cut the climb short and just have a quick loop. Um, but as you, if let's say if you were to climb all the way to the top of the bike park, you get to the upper trailhead. And from there, you would drop down if you're looking at the mountain on the left side. And that left side gives you access to the uppermost sections of the blue flow trail. And the uppermost section is called um, Air Rider. It's a bit rocky. It's got a couple of jumps and berms and stuff like that. Uh, and that will take you into Ryzen Rider, which takes you into Easy Rider. But if you keep going left, then you can go down our uh, Black Diamond Trail. And that's called Shogun Syndicate. Um, and that's, I think it's like two and a half kilometers of yeah, Black Diamond rated trail. There's a couple of rock drops and technical features, but for the most part, it's it's a pretty approachable yeah. trail for being a black diamond. I mean, you can probably speak to that better than I can. <laughs> yeah, uh, because as a beginner, I tried that one. There's a fear that I have to come down to my bike and just, you know, to, how do you say? Yeah, step off and yeah, walk the bike off. for a second. Yeah, well, that's fine. But, but it's really totally, like there's so many places, like routes that I can enjoy hmm. the riding. And, and I think being, as, a pair, as compared to a flow trail, being, um, uh, it's got some flowy sections, but it's a bit more just technical single track. There's more line choice options, and so it, it's a just a different feel. The flow trail is great, um, but I think Shogun is probably the most popular trail right now. 
Uh, and, and there's another one is ongoing, right? Yeah, we're, we're building a trail that's, it's currently named Taki Trail. Um, the upper section of that is quite likely to be a double black diamond. Yeah, it it's really hard. gnarly. It's, it's terrifying. Um, a lot of turns. I've ridden and walked bits and pieces of that with our trail builders. I don't go ride them uh, until it's open. Of course, being Namba staff, I can, I can. <laughs> Privilege. Well, it's not, it's not privilege. It's, it's checking the the, yeah. the project effectively. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's happens to be fun because I'm on a bike, yeah. but, um, yeah. So the Taki trail is, is a, we were initially thinking it'd be a black diamond trail, but there's so many rocks there that it's become a double black, uh, in the upper section, uh, quite likely is what it, what it would become. It's still under construction, but the lower section, we will probably build a connector trail over from Shogun. Ooh. So you can, skip the double black section and ride the lower single black diamond section by going halfway down Shogun and then cutting into Taki. Um, skip the harder part. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, it, it's, I, it's horrifying looking, uh, <laughs> like I'm, I'm a mountain biker, but I'm not like a Red Bull athlete or something like that. I'm a very normal person that just happens to like bicycles a lot. And, um, it's gnarly looking. Uh, <laughs> even our trail builders are like, this looks cooked. Um, most like, yeah, it, it, I would, Who's wear gonna f- ride that? <laughs> I, I would wear a full face helmet on that personally. Yeah. Um, cause I anticipate I will crash <laughs> <laughs> and it's all rocks. So oh full face elbow pads, knee pads, all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so we're, we're working on that right now. That's, um, it's October 1st right now, uh, as we're recording and we're maybe a couple of days, maybe a week away from finishing that oh that was quick but it's not going to be open uh-huh. um but in terms of the building because once we finish building a trail um being in a preservation forest uh we have to have a lot of uh checks and double checks and triple checks and approvals and um from the local council yes from the from the from hokkaido forestry they, they're managing the, the property so we have to abide by their rules um and the, the rules is another conversation <laughs> entirely but, um, yeah, so once we finish that trail, it needs a bit of time, f- almost to let it get rained on for the dirt to solidify before you really get tires on it. Wow. Okay. Um, so there's a process, like, yeah. it's not just like when I finish digging and everyone go. Yeah. Then, then wow. that kind of destroys the trail. You need it to, uh, be compacted and firm and ready to take tires. Um, otherwise wow. if you, if you go straight into like riding a fresh cut trail, it'll be really fun. It's so much fun, but uh, it's not sustainable mm. because um, after a couple of days of riding, it would be rutted out. And I don't know, it's a different style of riding. It's called like loam, mm. effectively. Uh, well, it, depending on the soil type, but uh, a lot of times if you're riding a fresh cut trail, it's pretty loamy, which means kind of soft. It's almost like the powder of dirt, basically. Mm, okay. So soft. Um, it's fun to just grab a handful of the rear brake and let the t- rear tire slide around. It's it's. It's a blast, but it's not really the most um, sustainable type because of you trail. Have to it every time Maintenance after. <laughs> and erosion issues, drainage. Because if it's soft, you're not able to control where the water goes. But if it's compacted, then oh, we know okay. where. Like, uh, we've got a better idea of what erosion issues we'll face and how to address those. Um, but yeah, so we're we're very nearly finished with that trail. That will be open for next year. Uh, in addition to Taki Trail, uh, probably the highlight for most people will be the skills park at the bottom right now. And that's, uh, I think, 1.6 or 1.8 kilometers in total. It's a it's a green trail that then has a loop on the end of it. Uh, it goes counterclockwise, and that loop has a couple of blue sections. So uh, intermediate riders and beginner riders can go out there and, and warm up, or they can try new features. There's a section that's uh, that's whole, the whole thing's called the mana skills park, like M A N A, which is like a New Zealand culture power basically. Uh, what do you um, think? <laughs> and, um, so we have like mana berms. And so beginner riders can see what a berm feels like without having to climb really far mm. up the, up the climbing trail. And an intermediate rider or an advanced rider can really session this and ride the same section over and over and over again. And they can learn how their tire wants to grip and maybe they can adjust tire pressure based off this where they can change the riding technique and it's really good for practicing we also have a similar section that's called mana uh pump and it basically in mountain biking you can weight and unweight the bike in a way Mm -hmm. that generates speed as you're riding so you're not pedaling you're just pushing the bike down 
sort yeah. of similar how a it's skateboarder really hard, that part <laughs> kind of how like a skateboarder generates yeah. speed in a bowl or yeah. uh, half pipe or something like that yeah. and then there's also mana jump there are jumps and that's a bit on the darker blue side almost towards black ish um and that's good for as the name implies practicing a couple of jumps it's uh got a few good berms but mostly just very friendly spots where you can jump and try getting in the air with pretty low consequence yeah um and yeah that, that's what we have built for this year uh and i think we're going to be doubling the amount of trails for next year roughly wow maybe doubling. Another, it's pretty um ambitious and aggressive expansion but uh all of them will be free park yeah yeah wow everything in twin peaks is free do you want to come to Taiwan? <laughs> uh, let us finish this first. Okay. Um, yeah, we're we're going to be trying to build another 13 kilometers next year. It's none of this is um, it's proposed right now, so we're we're working um, on securing funding as a nonprofit, of course, because we're not charging people, so we have to pay for these trails somehow. So we're working on securing sponsorship funding for these trails, um, and we're also working on flagging, looking at where the ideal sections to build the trails are and also like where where do trails want to be built the mountain terrain there's certain places that just need a certain type of trail and so we're looking at all of that right now and planning next year based off of that i'm more on the marketing side of things than the trail committee okay. so my knowledge and all of this trail stuff is is probably getting close to maxed out <laughs> what i've talked <laughs> right. about right now um but yeah we're uh we're in that kind of planning process and proposal process and once we have things planned proposed uh and approved um by so uh, approved by the landowner and, and the the management uh, hokkaido forestry and everything like that then we can actually start building and we're hoping to have the first trails completed early next summer like late june whoa so some of that will involve doing prep work now to build for next year because the snow is coming soon. Yeah. Um, and we want to basically, once the snow melts, we want to be able to start building immediately. So, uh, yeah, we're already looking at trails, flagging sections, thinking about what makes sense to build what and, or what makes sense to build where I should say. Um, so you are working on this, the current like Twin Peak Pipe Park, and at the same time you are looking for the next one, or even like even more for yeah. the others. You just mentioned, and there's a snow here. Well, that means like every year you have to go over again to rebuild the park or things. So you plan everything, including if there will be a snow after yeah. how you fix after the snow. And yeah, we're, we're working with Allegra on this, right? So Allegra is um, they're from Switzerland. They get a lot of snow in Switzerland as well, alpine terrain. Yeah. And so they deal with a lot of um, the same uh, environmental and weather issues that we face here. Of course, we have more snow than them, but they have you know maybe steeper terrain that they deal with there potentially. Um, because part of that, yeah, we're, we're thinking about drainage. We're thinking about um, the trail user experience as well. What, what experience do we want to bring to people? What's our focus for this bike park? Yeah. And we're trying to be um, approachable. So we're trying to have it be something where if no one's mountain bike before, like if they've never been on a bike before, they can come out there and have a good time and not feel scared. Um, or if it's uh, a kid and they're, they're mountain biking, but they've never ridden single track, they've only ridden um, some like skills, features in a, another place, they can come out here and have a good time. Uh, so we're, we're both looking at the terrain, but we're also thinking about uh, the user experience once it's all built so including like where they get their bike yeah kind of like so we're or you just focus on like building the bike park and that the like the business that other businesses the side, they will yeah other businesses following. will um of course they'll receive benefit from what we're doing yeah and that's, that's what we're trying to do we're trying to help the local economy um so other businesses they'll be providing all offering bike rentals and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, we're focused on connecting our trails with kind of more of the Hirafu resort area as well. So I think that that'll be part of our targeted expansion for next year. It's building that direction. But um, yeah, we're lucky to be sponsored by companies like no ask and rhythm. And both those companies offer rental bikes. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if someone has their own bike or if they want to rent from another company, 
that's not really our focus. Mm. We do want these local businesses to succeed and to receive benefit from this, but we also just mo mostly want people to have fun on the trails. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're, you know, renting a bike or not. It's ha what, what gives people the best experience. And as part of that though, the best experience, if you're visiting Niseko, if you're staying in Hirafu, that invol involves quicker access to the trails. Yeah. So we're expanding that way. And, um, and of course that involves maybe quicker access to yeah places like rhythm where um is a lot of people will probably be renting their bikes so we're not necessarily focused on supporting any one business but um we are thinking about how we can give trail users the best experience and that's everything from on exp on mountain like when they're riding but also you know we want to work with accommodation providers and have places that have bike storage or mm. like a basic maintenance stand so off the mountain when they're not riding it it contributes to this this whole picture of a of a mountain bike destination where everything feels like it's friendly for mountain bikers and people don't have to worry or stress about something they've got a secure place to lock up their bike他们的目标不仅是建立一个登山车公园，而是要从登山车公园出发去建立出一个对登山车玩家友善的社群与环境，让二十谷成为一个可以吸引世界各地的人来朝圣的登山车圣地。在下集的部分，Miles的分享会更